beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and if you don't think a giant floating eyeball with teeth and eye stalks is pretty, well, that's your problem. Today, I'm making a very special beholder known as Hagadorn and an action figure of Wolfgar the Barbarian, who I used to defeat him in one of our D&D Dark Alliance Let's Plays. Yes! 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 <laughs> Behold, homemade action figures. This is Kitbash Creatures. Presented by Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance. Hey everybody, I'm Max Scoville and this is Kitbash Creatures, a show all about creating homemade toys using whatever you got laying around. Today I'm going to be taking apart a bunch of action figures and then reassembling them in the shape of Wolfgar the Barbarian, who I played as in Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance, to defeat Hagadorn the Beholder, who I'll be making from scratch. Let's see how this goes. Making Hagedorn from scratch was the most challenging and daunting part of this whole project since he's a totally unwieldy shape and he's got a lot of little appendages and narrow parts just waiting to break off. I started with a wire mesh base to create the basic shape of his body and then use zip ties to hold that into place. To make his tentacles or eye stalks or whatever we call them, I threaded some armature wire through the mesh and then thoroughly zip tied that into place. Seriously, so many zip ties. But really, if any of the wire pieces are loose or wiggling around, that's gonna crack the putty I'll be using for his outer shell and we can't have that. For his big central eyeball, I used a spherical adult party beverage container, which I cut and sanded and drilled and of course zip tied into place. For larger areas of his body that didn't need to be as detailed or sturdy, I used an air drying foam clay that's popular with cosplayers. It's basically like moldable PVA foam. I hadn't used this stuff before, but it's basically a heavier duty version of Crayola Model Magic, but it takes a solid 48 hours to dry and it doesn't really retain fine detail very well, so I'll have to do some touch up later. For the parts of Hagedorn that needed to be sturdier, spikier, or more detailed, I used a two-part epoxy putty, which dries a little bit quicker and can be sculpted as it's curing. Unfortunately, it also takes a whole day to cure. Hagedorn's tongue is also made out of the black foam clay, and his teeth are a bunch of triangles I cut out of a plastic chicken container, bent with pliers, and then hot glued in place. Making all 10 of Hagedorn's smaller eyeballs was pretty straightforward, but still tedious because there are 10 of them. Basically, roll a ball of epoxy, let it dry, then add eyelids. The eyelids are made from a blend of white epoxy as well as green stuff, which dries a little faster and is better for finer detail, but is also way stickier and much more expensive, which is why I wouldn't use it for the entire body. When the eyeballs were dry, I drilled holes in each one and then mounted them on the wire ends of Hagedorn's eye stalks. Then I secured those with hot glue. I wasn't happy with the level of detail on the body, so I went to town with a rotary tool outside and just filed all of his rounded edges to be much pointier and craggy, and I made pretty much a whole blizzard of probably toxic powder. To give everything a nice finish that'll take paint evenly, I sealed the whole thing using Mod Podge, which I'm told is not regular white Elmer's glue, but aside from the bottle it comes in, I've seen no evidence to support these claims. Anyway, with that done, it is time to paint. I covered the whole thing with flat black spray primer, and then a little bit of white primer on top of that. This is a loose version of a technique that's called zenithal priming, or pre-shading, which is used a lot in miniature painting. In theory, the black emphasizes the shadows, and then the white punches up the highlights, which makes it much easier if you're using translucent paints, but you kinda can't tell because the first coat of acrylic paint I laid down wound up being totally opaque. Oh well. Acrylics are kind of a double-edged sword because they dry extremely fast. And while that's good because I'm kind of in a hurry and I don't want to wait around for paint to dry, it also means that if I mix a color and it dries out before I'm done using it, I've got to try to mix it again. After Hagedorn's base coat, I mixed up some paint, water, and a tiny bit of dish soap to create a translucent wash that would pool in the various cracks and crevices. After that, I added more details, more washes, and finally some dry brushing all over to make the highlights pop. Then, to really get the detail on Hagedorn's eyes, I use paint markers, which feels a little like cheating, but there are no rules when you're making a monster out of garbage and chemicals, so get off of my case already. At the very last minute, I realized there was no way to display Hagedorn short of hanging him from a string, so without the cameras rolling, I whipped up a base using a piece of concrete paver from my yard, hit that with some washes and stain, put a little fake moss on it, drilled some holes, and jammed a pair of wire arms covered in black tape in there. Oh, and also there's some cork on the bottom so the concrete doesn't scratch up whatever it's sitting on. Now, Wolfgar the Barbarian seemed like a much easier project, but this one proved to be just as much as, if not way more of a challenge than Hagedorn was. I started Wolfgar by cannibalizing a bunch of other action figures for parts. 
Most modern action figures are fairly easy to take apart if you put them in boiling water and pop their limbs off. This is a technique known as boil and pop, which sounds like a disgusting dermatology thing involving pus, but I assure you, it's much cleaner than that. Torsos and hips are a little fussier because they're usually made of harder plastic, but I made do. For Wolfgar's bracers and fur pelt, I scrounged some more pieces off of figures and then super glued them in place. I was genuinely amazed at how well the super glue held the pelt in place. I think the only thing I've seen it adhere to faster is, well, my own fingers. Nearly everything on Wolfgar's body is sculpted from a mix of two-part green stuff putty and the white epoxy I used all over Hagedorn. Green stuff is huge with people who make custom miniatures, and it's got a ton of potential, but there's a steep learning curve to working with it, and it's pretty pricey. Combining the green stuff and the white stuff is a tip I learned from Trent over at Miscast Terrains, who was on our last episode. It's a game changer, because it basically retains detail like green stuff, but thanks to the white epoxy, it's way less sticky, cures a bit slower, and gives you way more bang for your buck. When sculpting, timing is everything, because freshly mixed putty can be sticky and floppy, but if you let it cure a little bit, it's rigid enough to hold a shape, but still pliable enough that it'll also retain detail. Then, when it's hardened up a bit more, it's actually easy to stretch it into thin strips to make belts and laces and other stringy stuff like that. For some of Wolfgar's buckles, I bent tiny pieces of wire into place, which I think look really cool. I made a bunch of his accessories on his belt from scratch, and then to create his hammer, I put a bunch of putty on a chopstick and filed the hell out of it. I think it gives it a bit of a rough, dented, forged look, which is cool, but I wish I'd had time to sculpt all of the runes and filigree on the hammer part. That would have probably taken forever, and I think I found a decent enough solution, which we'll get to shortly. When all of Wolfgar's fur and armor and belts and pelts and all that was finally dry, it was time to paint. And with just a day left to finish this project, here's where I screwed up big time. Not all plastic plays nice with spray paint. Epoxy or the brittle polystyrene or resin that's used for model kits, no problem. But the rubbery plastic they use to make action figures, nope. The paint just doesn't dry. It'll feel sticky forever. This was a total rookie mistake on my part. I think I knew it in the back of my head, but totally screwed up. So I broke out my airbrush and primed him with black and white acrylic paint. I plan not to use an airbrush on this project because there was no room for proper ventilation with all the camera gear set up. Plus, airbrushes are expensive, and I wanted to show that this was doable with more accessible tools and materials, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Thankfully, it worked, and I was able to finally start properly painting Wolfgar. I used a mix of artist acrylics and mini paints, and the process flew by and was also a lot of fun. I started with the larger areas, then moved on to details, and then added some washes and dry brushing where applicable. For the gold detailing on his hammer, I used some paint markers again, and I'm not crazy about the result, but I think it gets the point across and was a lot quicker than trying to sculpt all that by hand, which I could have done. Just look at the deer on his chest. I did that. That was very, very detailed. It just took a while, okay? All in all, I'm incredibly proud of Wolfgar. This is my first time customizing an action figure this much, and I'm just dying to do another at this point, using what I've learned to not screw up quite as much. Hagedorn is a little more cartoony and homemade looking than I was hoping, but I'm still amazed I was able to put together something this size in this amount of time, and my extensive zip tying paid off because he is shockingly sturdy. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Hagedorn glows in the dark because glow in the dark spray paint is a thing, and it's awesome. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how Hagedorn turned out. Obviously, it's not an exact replica of how he looks in Dark Alliance, uh, but I kind of like how uh, it's, you know, it feels kind of fan arty. It feels like an interpretation, and, you know, it looks a little bit like a kid made it, which I'm kind of a big kid, and I had fun making it, so what's wrong with that? If I were going to do this again, I would try to get the shape a little bit more, I guess, elongated this way. He's much more, like, actually spherical. He's kind of flat like this. Uh, if I was going to get really fancy, I probably would have tried to find a translucent ball for the eye and then put some EL wire or LEDs inside there so he could light up uh, and do that, you know, that, like, nightmare laser beam move he does in the game. Uh, all things considered, I'm pretty proud of how it came out. Like, it could have been a lot worse. It's so sturdy. Like, doing all those stupid zip ties, like, totally worked. Like, it's actually, like, a really nice kind of chunky figure, and it's shockingly light. As far as a, a first attempt at making a beholder, it's not too bad. I'm extremely proud about how Wolfgar came out. Uh, you know, obviously there's some stuff that could be better. The hammer could, you know, have embossed details. The pants are supposed to have a couple little belts here, but I feel like that would have messed up the articulation. And there's supposed to be stitches along the side, which I'm kind of tempted to go in and add with a paint marker, just because that would be an easy, easy fix. I looked at a close-up of his face in the game, and he's got a little scar right there, which I didn't add, which I should have because scars are super easy and fun, but 
you know, it's 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 a very close approximation. I think it looks really good. And honestly, like, this was kind of an experiment. This is my first time doing something this in-depth as far as customizing a figure goes. I've, you know, I've done some repaint stuff. I've done a little bit of stuff with Putty, but like, I haven't, I haven't tried anything like this before. I've just looked at stuff on the internet about it. Well, I had a good time building these and really learned a lot of valuable lessons about epoxy and spray paint and time management. And now comes the really hard part. We're giving them away. They could be yours. I just ask that you give them a good home. Hagedorn likes a cup of warm milk before bed. But seriously, if you want to win these, we're giving them away. The contest rules are in the video description. Uh, and if you'd like to go and see Hagedorn up close and get bit by him a whole bunch, you can do that in Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance, which is out now for PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, and Windows Store. If you want to find out more, darkalliance.com. And if you want to find out how to beat Hagedorn, check out some strategies over on IGN.com. See you next time.